Uh, so uh, many times I start new projects, but uh, I don't know the best practices. I don't know the best tools to use for um, for the consist uh, consistency uh, development. And uh, that's the question. First questions. All right. So, like starting a project, like what what exactly? Like starting a, an empty project, and what should be the next step? Like the first steps. Uh, I, I asked the question for a feature and a new project. Like uh, I have some some ideas I want to to, to develop, but uh, I always been stuck uh, at the time because I don't know what to choose, what to what to do. Right. When you say what to choose, you mean like between frameworks or yes. Between... Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I've been there. I would always yeah. get stuck. Like, should I use core data? Should I use SQLite? Should I use something different? Right. And you can get yeah. really paralyzed. There are so many choices, especially nowadays. Like <laughs> there are so many choices and it's hard to make a decision. And I know it's tempting to start choosing the frameworks first, the tools. Mm. And I say this because like when I start learning how to write code, I would always start from tools, right? Because the tools already give you like a head start. But focusing on the infrastructure details, on this complexity, it can really slow you down. Because first of all, you get paralyzed by decisions. And also, you may start making decisions based on the tools you choose, and they might you may hit a roadblock as well because that tool was not made for what you're trying to implement, and then you get stuck again. Yeah, I start uh, developing two years ago, and uh, I I start directly with uh, Eric Swift like coordinators. Um, so I know uh, it's my first first. Um, how can I say that? Uh, the first tool I use, the first um, uh, framework I, I use. So yeah. so now it's complicated to to switch. Yeah, yeah, to do it without it. Yeah, yeah. I had the same problem. I remember at the time I was using something like what was it called a AF HTTP client or something like this that was very convenient. But then when I had to do something without it, it was always like. I had to go back to documentation and it would yeah. slow me down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Same. Right. So I recommend not start, not starting from the framework's point of view. Mm -hmm. Or for example, in the beginning, when I started writing iOS apps, or I was start looking which dependencies we were bring it. Now you have Cocoa Pods, right? In the past you didn't, but you have Cocoa Pods now. So usually what you do, the first thing you do when you create a new project is which Cocoa Pods should I bring? And you already make a list. I'm going to bring Rx Swift, uh, Alamo Fire, and, and you're already choosing the framework without thinking about what actually you need to implement. It's just because I'm so used to use those frameworks that they are my, my first choice, right? It gives me that boost of productivity. Yeah. So I recommend you don't start here, even though it's tempting. I know it's tempting. <laughs> Yeah, or you've used like a, one of those libraries in the past, then you know how to use it and you say, well, okay, I'm going to fit it in this project as well. You know, like I remember specifically HUDs, <laughs> you know, like the, the UI, um, the progress HUD libraries. That was a classic one. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you may still use those tools, I recommend not starting from here. Right. Okay. Exactly. Because exactly. the problem is that you will waste a lot of time setting up all those frameworks. And most of the times you don't even going to use all the code you will bring. You have to compile a bunch of stuff up front. Okay. So you have like an empty project and you will have an empty screen, but just to build all the dependencies there, it will take like three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. So already slows you down, even though you don't even need that code yet. Mm. Also, you will be designing your app from the framework point of view. So the frameworks will start dictating architectural decisions that then later might be hard to switch that framework and remove the framework if needed, you know? So you will mm -hmm. couple your app with those details because you will start developing your app from the frameworks. And I recommend you do the opposite. Yeah. That you yeah. build your apps from the app features and you plug in the frameworks to fulfill the, the infrastructure details like 
performing a network request or saving something to a database. Okay. Otherwise, it would be harder to test and maintain your app in isolation. For example, you have to use core data in many places when testing. Because if your core data is at the center of your application, a bunch of components, even views, will talk to core data directly. So any kind of testing, any kind of like small component you need to instantiate, you need to somehow pass a context to it or set up a global singleton context that you can access from the scene delegate, for example. Mm -hmm. And it will be hard, again, to use other frameworks in the future. You know, because it's very common that developers, they want to use another framework. They're like, oh, I don't want to use Rx Swift anymore. I want to use Combine. But my code is so coupled with Rx Swift that I cannot get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I have the case. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I've done that before as well. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I know. I've done that mistake. There'll be so much work to replace them. They're just like, no, I'm going to live with Rx Swift forever. There's no way I'm going to get rid of it. So you kind of get you get locked into frameworks. And ideally, you don't want your applications locked into any framework. You can still use the frameworks, but ideally, you should be able to swap them if needed. Yeah. So the solution is to build your app from your requirements. You know, at the core, at the center of your application should be your use cases, your models. And they should be decoupled from the frameworks. If your models layer needs to make a network request, you can create an abstraction. OK. And you will have a component implemented that abstraction that uses core data. Right? So for example, you have a, like a list of items that you need to load from a database. You have the list UI, let's say a list of uh, customers. So you can have the customer list UI a view controller or a Swift UI view. Okay. And you may have some uh, customer view model. Normally, customer view model that can define the, the properties here that you need to render on the list, like a customer name, customer birthday, or whatever makes sense. Yeah. And you can develop all of this. You can start this list. You can create all of this without any database, without core data. You can, you can do this without talking to a backend. So you can develop your features without coupling them with infrastructure details, which can be much faster. You can develop this UI without any database. And you can implement the database later. You can develop it without even having a backend. And then you can plug in the backend later. So it can be much faster. You can have something running on your iPhone you know, so you don't get stuck very quickly. You can okay. get yeah, yeah. feedback there. Yeah, that's right. And if he needs to make a back, uh, like a remote request, you can create an abstraction like a customer service that loads all the customers. And while you are testing or developing your application, you can use like a in-memory customer service that already provides some data just so you can show something on the screen. Okay, we create a fake uh, repository. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't need to be fake, like, but it, it can be just an implementation with hard coded data. Yeah, like a, for demo purposes or for development purposes. Okay. And when testing, you can also have another implementation of it. So this way, you're not making the decisions about the frameworks. You will use core data in the future if you think core data is, ne is the way to go. But maybe you will see that it's so simple that maybe you're just going to store it in a flat file in the file system with two okay. lines of code, data.save to file system, and you pass a URL, you know? Because if you okay. don't need any query mechanism, maybe core data is not necessary. You can just use the file system for persisting the, the JSON file that you load from the API, for example. Or you can use the URL cache, depending on the case. So you can defer the, the decisions of which frameworks to use. 